Looks like you lost another one. What's going on YouTube, man? I'm your host, Big Money Pow, and this is Big Money Boxing. So, man, yesterday, man, we had an exciting fight yesterday. I, I really enjoyed the fight against Maurice Hooker versus Virgil Ortiz. Virgil Ortiz stopped Maurice Hooker in the seventh round. Um, due to a hand injury, but I, he was probably going to get stopped anyway because he was getting hurt to the body. Very, very badly. Um, he even said it in his corner that the body shot got him. He couldn't breathe. But um, I want to say is this. I really didn't like that fight when I first heard it as the matchmaking because this would have been Virgil as I was. This would have been Maurice Hooker's first fight at 147. His last fight before that, he fought at a catchweight at 144. Virgil Ortiz has been campaigning at 147 for some time now and then not only that his camp his team has already given Maurice Hooker his first L when Jose Ramirez stopped him and then in my eyes I, I'm saying it like this I'm thinking it like this Virgil Ortiz is nothing but a bigger aggressive Jose Ramirez I would say he's probably a little bit more a little bit more polished than Jose Ramirez um in terms of that aggressive style is what I mean. So, I didn't really like that. But Maurice Hooker, man, he's a champ, man. You know, former champ. Um, champ at heart or whatever. So, he still took the fight. However, during the fight, what I wanted to see for Maurice Hook, I wanted to see him box and move. Box and move on the back foot. Use his jab. Use his range. Keep his opponent at, pay, at bay. Keep Virgil Ortiz at bay. But he started to do that. The first round, Maurice, uh, first round, Virgil Ortiz. The second round, Virgil Ortiz. But then he started making that an adjustment when he started boxing, making him pay, hitting him, touching him up with the right hand, going to the body in the, in the third round. I gave that third round to Maurice Hooker and the fourth round to Maurice Hooker. Um, but Virgil Ortiz, he noticed that. He noticed that he said it in his interview that the head shots weren't really hurting him like that. So he started investing in the body. And that was his adjustment to start investing in the body. And that was pretty smart on his end. You know what I'm saying? Like, because he was getting fairly touched in the body. Maurice Hooker was getting touched. But he was also getting touched with that jab. Like, I'm watching the fight. And I'm like, man, he need to take his head off the line or something. A slip or something. Because he keep getting popped with the jab. Just popping with the jab. Double jab, single jab, just, I'm just like, damn, bro, move your head, dog, so you can stop getting touched with that jab. Your head, his head was bopping back. But he didn't make that adjustment. And um, if you know anything about boxing, if you can touch your opponent with your jab, you can touch him with anything. So and then he started bringing that jab to the body. Then he started going around his elbows and started digging him into the body. Virgil Ortiz was doing that. And, um, and that's the only adjustment I seen to make. Instead of, instead of going head hunting like he usually do, I mean he's a, a fair body puncher, but he only, he really only go to the body to mix up his to mix up his combination when he got his opponent when he got his opponent hurt. When he got his opponent hurt. Um, but it was a good fight, man, good fight. But based upon Virgil Ortiz's performance, is he ready for arguably the number one pound for pound fighter in boxing, Terence Bud Crawford? If the man say he ready, God damn it, he ready. Do I think he ready? Nah, I don't. Because there's levels to this game. You know what I'm saying? Terrence Bob Crawford, man, he's, he's man, he, the, the man can box, he can bang, he can do it all. Switch, he can do it all. And he's just too smart, too experienced. It would be in Virgil Ortiz's demise to even fight Terrence, Crawford, Terrence Bob Crawford. But if he do, it is what it is, man. You know, nobody, I can't, I mean, even though I don't feel like he ready, the man say he ready. The damn it, he ready. So, put him in there. Put him in there. Golden boy, they go ahead and put him in there. But I really think Terrence Bo Crawford either outbox him, outclass him, but he mess around to stop the dude. And another thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, first of all, he got that high guard. You know what I'm saying? He got that high guard in that. And that high guard, man, it's, it's cool. You dig? But against somebody like Terrence Crawford, 
Nah, that ain't gonna work on that young man's injuries. He don't get touched that body a lot. And Terrence Crawford is an underrated body puncher. You know what I'm saying? You see what he, you see how he's digging on, digging in the body on Jose Benavidez. He was, he was giving him good work. You see how he did Julius Andago. He was giving him good work. You see how he was doing Jeff Horn. He was giving him good work to the body. We don't really talk about his body punches like that because he's that damn good. He's that damn good that you don't even see this little subtle thing that he do. But with that hat guard against Terrence Crawford, man, I don't, I don't know, dog. I don't know. He probably want to learn a different, you know what I'm saying, a, a different stance or a different guard stance or something because uh, that ain't going to work on his interest. Terrence, Terrence Crawford going to get around that. He's going to split that guard. He's going to invest in that body. He's going to go around that guard. He's going to do a whole bunch of things to that guard, and that won't be in that young man's interest. So, it's a good fight, man. It's, it'll be a good entertaining fight. You know what I'm saying? But Terrence Crawford really wouldn't gain anything from it, from beating him. People are already saying that he, he'll be the best guy on Terrence Bud Crawford resume. Uh, that's kind of premature to say that. If the young man is talented for sure. He's talented for sure. Got to give him that. But the best man, the best fighter on Terrence Crawford's resume, when he's been the champion of 135, 140, undisputed, and now at 147, I mean, they, he gained, he ain't already on gain nothing. Even from those comments, he don't gain nothing. But another knockout or another victory on his record, a few dollars in the bank, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know, man. What I think Terrence Crawford should do, man, if he do press him, go ahead and stop him. Get him out the way. But if Terrence Crawford got the energy to fight him, he should damn sure have the energy to fight Sean Porter. And that was facts. If he got the energy to fight Virgil Ortiz, he got the energy to fight Sean Porter. And I would rather see that fight. You know what I'm saying? Because Sean Porter, he's been in there with everybody. Kale Brook, Paulie Marginali, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, Errol Spence. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 Devin Alexander. He ain't been in there with some, with some guys, man. He ain't been in there with some champs. Some, some, some. And he ain't fought them guys in their prime, too. You know what I'm saying? So, Adrian Broner. So it won't really work in his bet. I think he should fight that dude first before he fight. He and he's already number one mandatory for Terrence Crawford. And if Sean, Terrence Crawford got the energy to fight Virgil Ortiz, man, he damn sure got the energy to fight goddamn Sean Porter. Go ahead, Bob Aaron need to go ahead and pay that man. Yeah. Virgil Ortiz ain't ready for him, but if you feel like he's ready for him, put him in there. Nobody knows if he's ready for him unless he's the man said he ready. He ready for everybody, Earl Spence, Terrence Crawford, the top 10, top 5 guys in the division. Put him in there. Test him out. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Let the man do what he got to do. Let the man continue to prove himself. Can he do more? Yeah, he can do more. Can he fight other people outside the champs? Of course he can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he can fight some other guys. Um, same thing like Jerron Boots Ennis. Can he fight some other people outside the champs? Yeah, yeah of course. But, I'm going to cover Jaron Ennis on a different segment. <laughs> Big Money Boxing. Anyways, man, look. Virgil Ortiz, man, good win. Good win for sure. Appreciate the win. Um, Maurice Hooker, appreciate you for going in there, man, and doing what you did, man. And uh, you performed well. It is what it is, man. You you most definitely can come back. It's the grace and loss, you know what I'm saying? So you most definitely can come back. Uh, but Virgil Ortiz... He feel like he ready for Terrence Crawford. Let him be ready for Terrence Crawford. Even feel like I don't feel ready. like he ready. The man say he ready. The damn it, he ready. So put him in there. Put him in there. Golden boy, they go ahead and put him in there. But I really think Terrence Bo Crawford either outbox him, outclass him, or he mess around and stop the dude. I mean, it is what it is. But that's my prediction. That's what I think was gonna happen. Um, the only reason why I'm saying that because right now Verzo T Z is one dimensional. You know what I'm saying? He's one dimensional. Um, he can he can box for sure, but he needs to we need to see him take something away from his opponent. You know what I'm saying? Like when he so this previous fight with Maurice Hooker, he he did good, he did very well. But he didn't really take anything away from Maurice Hooker. And you can see at the end of the fight that he was got he was getting touched up a lot. So if Maurice Hooker can touch him up like that, and he's not even no near as strong, fast, or smarter than Terrence Crawford, then what you think Terrence Crawford going to do? I mean, styles make fights, but we've already seen a style kind of like him a few times or whatever 
when it went against Bud Crawford. Most recently it was Kavaskis. You know what I'm saying? Kyle Ox was, was pressing him, trying to press him or whatever. He had good time in this and then the third. But eventually, you know, Terrence Crawford stopped him in his, at his own game, at his own type of fight. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Terrence Bill Crawford, man, he is at the pinnacle. He's, he's still in his prime, man, like 33 years old. And I don't think that it would probably be a smart entry. It'd be, it, it, it may make him better. It may have a Canelo Mayweather effect on him. You know what I'm saying? Because Canelo was 23, old, 23 years old when he fought. Mayweather, you know what I'm saying? He had a, a high record, you know what I'm saying, 40, 40 something and oh or whatever, and so did Mayweather. But the experience played the part in that fight. Mayweather was 36 when he fought when he fought Canelo. Canelo was 23. But and you see the air result with that, and Canelo has only got better. If they if Maurice Hooker, as a not Maurice Hooker, if Virgil Ortiz and Terrence Crawford fight, then that's what we can see. We probably can see that, but he needs more time, more things, more different looks. You know what I'm saying? Like, add stuff better into his arsenal instead of just changing the changing the uh, trajectory of his punches from the top to the bottom. You know what I'm saying? To the head, to the body. Other than that, man, I watch the fight. I will support the fight for sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? I I'm just because I, I love boxing that much, but. I don't think it'd be in his best interest to do that. You know what I'm saying? I really don't. He's going to get outclassed if he fights Terrence Crawford. He may last a few rounds. He may win a couple of rounds. You know what I'm saying? Because Terrence Crawford, he's kind of a slow starter. But once Terrence Crawford can figure out your rhythm and he get his, and he get your timing and he get his time and his this and his that, man, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. He's going to let his hands go. He's going to put punches and bunches together. He's going to slip. He ain't going to stay enough for the, you know what I'm saying, how Maurice Hooker did. And he's going to stay in there and get constantly get touched with that jab. He's going to do his thing, man. Terrence Crawford's going to do his thing. Um, but big ups to Virgil Ortiz, man, against Maurice Hooker, man. You know, Maurice Hooker, I felt like he, he as Virgil Ortiz said, he didn't have to take the fight. I, I don't think he... Should have took the fight, but he did because he's a champion, he's a warrior, he's a dog, and he ain't ducking or dodging nobody. You know what I'm saying? So, big ups to Maurice Hooker. And congrats to Virgil Ortiz on a stoppage against a young, uh, a veteran as Maurice Hooker. You know what I'm saying? But more to come, more to follow against that matchup. Hopefully we see that matchup, you know what I'm saying? Terrence Crawford, Virgil Ortiz, eh. End of this year, September, maybe July, you know what I'm saying? Somewhere around that time or whatever, because Bud ain't been in the ring since he did Kale Brooks something decent, you know what I'm saying? So hopefully we get to see that matchup, man. I love to see that young man in the in the ring again. I love watching Terrence Crawford. I love studying him. Uh he just he's just a beautiful boxer. He's just a beautiful boxer. And uh, and I really admire his boxing style and his boxing abilities and his boxing IQ. Virgil Ortiz, man, he's up and coming. I think in the later years, maybe two to three or maybe three to four, Jerome Boots Ennis, oh yeah, Jerome Boots Ennis and Virgil Ortiz, that'd be the that'd be the mega matchup. See that fight. Um, hopefully we get to see both of those fights with both of those teams or whatever. But in due time, man, you know things happen on this and that. So I just I just want to see the best in boxing, just like the rest of the boxing fans and the casual boxing fans and the critics and the this and the that. But it is what it is, man. Appreciate y'all, man. This is Big Money Pal, Big Money Boxing. And make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate y'all, man. Big Money Boxing. Bang. Looks like you lost another one.